So this is a little mini lesson on factoring using DOTS. DOTS is a short acronym which stands for difference of two squares. Difference, D, of two squares. So um, when we look at it algebraically, if we're taking a binomial where a quantity is being squared minus a different quantity being squared, that term or that function or expression can be expanded into the following factors of whatever was being squared of A plus B times the quantity A minus B. So to first to see how this works, we're going to start with the expanded factored form and we're going to go ahead and work backwards. Now the process of working backwards from factoring is called FOIL. And FOIL, if you remember from your Algebra 1 class, FOIL stands for first outside, inside, last. First, outside, inside, last. FOIL, F-O-I-L. Now, what I mean by multiplying first, if I want to use this as my example, first means I'm going to take the first term in the first expression, and we're going to multiply that by the first term of the second expression. So in my example here, I'm going to do a times a. So when I do that in my example down here, x times x is going to give me x times x or x squared. Then I'm going to add to that the outside piece, which outside states I'm going to take the outside of my expression. So if this is my entire expression, my very outside element is A. I'm going to multiply that by the very outside element or the second term of the sec the second term of the second expression, B. So I'm going to do A times B. So here I'm going to go ahead and do X times negative 5. That's going to give me a negative 5X. Then I look at inside. Well if this is going to be outside then inside would be the second element of the first term times the first element of the second term. So here, A times B obviously is the same thing as B times A by the commutative property. So here I'm going to do B times A. And when I do 5 times X, I end up with a positive 5X. Last thing I'm going to FOIL is last, which means the second term of the first expression times the second term of the last expression. So b times negative b. And when I do that here, my example, 5 times negative 5 is going to give me a negative 25. Because remember, a positive times a negative is negative. So now that I've foiled correctly and followed those steps of foiling, I can combine like terms because this is a positive 5x and a negative 5x. I can add those together, and those are going to cancel each other out and become zero by the um, uh, property there in algebra where we talked about adding two things that have same coefficients but different signs are going to create zero, or um, the addition property there. So what I'm left with is an x squared minus 25. And for dots, this is very important because what's being squared right here, what's being squared right here, is an x. x is being squared. And what's being squared here with the 25? Well, technically, that is a 5 that's being squared. So my a, my a is x, my b is 5. So I can then use that to get back to this original form. Now go ahead, if you want, you can try example number 2 here for your uh, foiling activity, just to make sure you follow it. So again, pause the video, uh, try that problem. And then you can kind of check your steps after the fact. First, outside, inside, last. It gives me an x squared minus a 6x plus a 6x minus 36. Since these two cancel each other out, I'm left with an x squared minus 36, which is the same thing as something being squared, like x, minus 6 being squared. Okay? So let's go ahead then and let's look at how we're going to, rather than foiling and go from our expanded form to our uh, non-expanded form, we're going to, our, our expanded form back to our factor form, now we're going to go reverse order. So let's look at our first example here. 
and we're going to factor. The first thing we need to do is we need to identify what's being squared. So here I have an n squared, so n is being squared. And what I need to ask myself is 144, what times itself is going to equal 144? And if you know your perfect squares, this is quite an easy process. Um, also, if you need to, need to help yourself out and you think it's a difference of two squares, you can always square root to see if it comes out to an integer. And whatever integer it comes out to, that's going to be your uh, perfect square. So in this case, it's going to be 12 times 12. So 12 is being squared. And when I look at that, to fit into my formula, I need an a plus b, and then I need an a minus b. So if a is n, I have an n and an n, and b is 12, so I have a 12 and a 12. The only thing I have to make sure I'm really careful of is that one binomial is a plus, and the other binomial is a minus. And now I've factored using difference of two squares. This type of factoring is very pattern-based. If you can recognize and find the patterns, it's a quick way to factor problems. So when I look at, for example, number 4, 9x squared minus 4, I recognize 9 is a perfect square. That's 3. It's square root of 9 is 3. x squared is x being squared. So what's being squared? 3x. Here, I have a 4, and when I take the square root of 4, I get 2. 2 squared is 4. So as long as I remember my pattern of 3x plus 2, and I do 3x minus 2, it's a quick way to expand or factor um, these types of polynomials. So the rest of these problems are all example problems you can try. Um, just make sure you're following along. There's one I want to go over here. Actually, let's look at this real quick as a class, because this is really important. Look at 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Which one is different from the others? There's one problem that's a little bit different than the others, and it's important to recognize this difference. So if you looked at it, you said, oh, number 8. 8 is different. What makes 8 so different? I'm going to star this one because this is fairly important. Even though um, there's really two things. 2 2 is not a perfect square. I cannot take the square root of that and get an integer. The other part of this is, it's called dots, difference of two squares. It's got to be a subtraction sign. Right now, I have a sum. This is a sum, whereas here, I would have to have a difference or subtraction. So when you see this type of um, pattern recognition, and you see a plus there, we cannot use a difference of two squares to factor this. Now, is it still factorable? Yes. And in the last lesson, we talked about factoring with GCF, or greatest common factors. 2b squared and 50. Is there any number or variable that they share? Well, this has got b squared. This has no b, so nothing there. But 2 has factors of 2 and 1, where 50 has a factors of 2 and 25. So since they share a common factor of 2, I can factor out a 2 and get b squared plus 25, but I cannot go any further because it's not a difference of two squares. That's a really important problem to see um, and to make sure we don't fall into that, that trap when we're talking about difference of two squares. So go ahead and try the rest of these problems and check them with the answer key. Uh, again, this has just been a short mini lesson on factoring using difference of two squares.